So there's been a lot of question marks over some of Manchester United's summer signings already. People putting question marks over Anana. People are saying, OK, well, Mount's a good player, but was he necessary? And the recruitment team itself didn't want Ten Hag to sign Amrabat. And one of the players that had the most question marks around them was Rasmus Hoyland. £64 million pounds for this 20-year-old striker. And it's crazy to think, two months into the season, Rasmus Hoyland's the player with the least question marks around him. He has been absolutely phenomenal when he has played. And he scored a goal yesterday for, obviously, Denmark. He's now the second top scorer behind Lukaku um, in the European qualifiers. And he was fantastic. But what I like about Hoyland is he's so complete. He's a guy, because I know he hasn't scored a Premier League goal yet, but he's a guy that, take away goal scoring, he still does so much dribble, hold up the ball, link up play. He's so complete at such a young age. And if he reaches his potential, he could be a joke of a player. I'm not, I'm not even lying, like... The levels he could reach is an absolute joke if he reaches his potential. And of course, we can't hype someone up that is so young so much. But we can see just from glimpses of him playing this season, his all round potential, but also how complete he is. You know, this guy can't, it's not just about scoring goals. It's about holding up the ball, linking up play, making runs, making dribbles, creating space. His athleticism is, is, up, is at the top, which I think is why he's compared with Haaland. He, you know, he's in the graveyard shift at United. People forget that. Like every pretty much opportunity he's had at United, he's basically put away and scored. Like he's not missed any sitters. He holds up the ball so the attackers can catch up to him, lays it on the attackers and actually creates chances. So we're going to go through Rasmus Hoyland and what he adds to Manchester United and why he's such a good player and such a good signing. As you can see, man of the match yesterday, top scorer in the Champions League. <clears throat> and that was yesterday when he was third most, but he's actually on seven. So he's, he's joint second most in the European qualifiers. And what actually motivated me to this video was two things. I wanted to do a video analysing Rasmus Hoyland post Galatasaray, but I was just so upset like with the performance versus Galatasaray that I thought, you know what, I just can't. I don't I don't have the energy for this. And then I saw this tweet and it really inspired me. And it's comparing Hoyland and Haaland. But obviously we know Haaland is levels above Hoyland. We know Erling Haaland is absolutely fantastic. Um, and he's just the most elite goal scorer out there. But it was saying that Hoyland's actually more complete than Haaland because Hoyland can do this and that off the ball. And I think he made a point, you know, Hoy the things that Hoyland does off the ball was big. So, yeah, I want to read out this tweet quickly and then I'm going to get to my analysis of Hoyland and break down his games for United one by one and show why he's been so important and why his potential is crazy. So, so basically, it said, to put it simply, Hoyland's overall game is superior to Erling Haaland's. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, in my opinion, nor does that mean Hoyland is better than Haaland either, which is true. Haaland's a better goal scorer, Haaland's a better player, but Hoyland has does things that Haaland can't, like dribble. Do you know what I mean? Um, it was said, if you look at Man City, it's not hard to tell they create the most chances while they're centre forward. They're able to dominate possess possession and sustain pressure and control tempo of games, adding Haaland in that pretty much guarantees goals if not one of the best nines in the world. City will create chances and Harlem will always pick out great positions and be found by his teammate and even cross slash pass isn't best. He has the athleticism to somehow get there and finish. They're talking about Harlan, how City create loads of chances for him, but Harlan's such a good guy that he just finds a way to get on the end of those chances. But let's be honest, if you put Harlan in this current Man United side, he won't be able to score anywhere nearly as many goals as he scored last time. And this is just because how poorly United control games, especially against low box, the lack of service we get for a number nine. So having Haaland in the Man United team wouldn't be amazing for us because he's a goal scorer, but we're not creating the chances for him to score goals. Now, obviously, Haaland has um, the ability to manipulate the ball in the box and create chances for himself. He can do that, but he doesn't do that to, I say, a top, a top level. He's not one of those people that's natural at dribbling and carrying the ball and dropping deeper under pressure and stuff. He can do it, but not natural. And this is where Rasmus Hoyland comes in. Because Rasmus Hoyland can do all of those things to a good standard. He can drop deep, pick up the ball, link up play, carry the ball forward. <clears throat> he can be very involved in Manchester United's build-up play, as well as being their centre forward to be on the end of things and put chances away. He scored that header against Galatasaray. He then got that side goal against Galatasaray, which was very composed. And then he made a goal himself, basically carrying the ball and using his speed. You know, we some versus Arsenal when he came on, he held up the ball well versus Gabriel and we actually created a chance. And even the Garnacho offside goal all actually originated from Hoyland holding up the ball and stuff and coming deep as well. 
So yeah, I think that's what Hoyland is. And I think for me, even though Hoyland's not having loads of chances great for him, he does work in this United side because he works incredibly hard himself. His pressing numbers speak for themselves. And he said that Hoyland's overall game allows him to still have an impact, even if he's not had the chances to have scored any goals. Hence why I often refer to him as a complete centre forward. The way he can dribble the ball, despite his height and frame, is not normal. His presence alone creates space for others and keeps our oppositions worried, which is true. You know, he dribbles the ball so well, but also like... He makes runs and that draws defenders out, which would create spaces for someone like Rashford. Obviously, Hoyland is raw and, you know, this is early days, but we're just talking about sort of how complete Rasmus Hoyland is for such a young player. And that inspired me to make today's video where I'm going to really analyse Rasmus Hoyland and his games for Manchester United. So we're going to start off with his game versus Galatasaray. This is what I said right after the Galatasaray game, which unfortunately we lost. But I said Rasmus Boylan's performance last night was nothing short of incredible, showcasing he has the attributes to come elite number nine. His strength stood out as he expertly held up the ball, dropped deep and connected with our attackers. His dribbling skills were on full display, completing three attempts with ease. Three out of three dribbles were completed. Notably, his run in the opening two minutes almost deserved an assist when he put that cross in. And that was against Galatasaray. But we saw versus Galatasaray, you know, he has the pace and strength, which is, I think, why he's compared to Haaland, you know, he has the physical attributes, you know, he's got the athleticism to be stronger and faster than the defenders, which is brilliant. But we saw that he's a good finisher. He only got three chances. He got three goals. Obviously, one was ruled out. The finishes for all of his goals were brilliant. The one that was ruled out, it was just the composure to hold up the ball, take a touch and shoot. The first goal was that brilliant header from that Rashford cross in. And then that third goal was just him making that brilliant run versus Galatasaray. And I said, despite the limited service he's received, Hoyland has made every chance he gets count. You know, he's hit the back of the net five times to United. Only three have counted. But it still proves that he's a natural striker with that natural striker's instincts you know when he does get chances in the grey belt shift it goes in and I think he's one of the bright sparks at Man United at the moment because I think you know he's just so complete that that's what's what scares me about Hoyland um not like scares me in a good way but you know I was a big fan of Gonzalo Ramos I was a bit skeptical about Hoyland at first but then I did research on him and I thought this Hoyland guy is good but it's actually like people don't realise how complete Hoyland is. And it's not just talking about how complete he is. It's his work rate, how he presses. You know, he's got the highest pressing numbers. It, you know, you go beyond his work rate. You go into things like obviously dribbles, runs, hold up, you know, versus Gabriel in that opening game, the way he held up the ball so well. You know, and obviously his Premier League ratings won't be the highest on sofa score, but that's just a poor reflection of Brighton. The one chance he got, he actually put the ball in the back of the net. But we saw when he came on versus Arsenal, it was against Gabriel. He held up the ball so well and laid off the ball and actually created chances through that. We saw versus Brighton, he scored the only goal we got. Burnley, he was a little bit quiet, but we were just scrapping that game. Crystal Palace, I thought he was fine. He almost scored, actually, and then he cleared it off the line. And Brentford, he just did a very good job of holding up the ball and linking play. So even though he didn't score in those games, we saw him an impact. We saw that his his pressing and his constant movement off the ball was causing the opposition defence trouble. We saw that he was creating space. But do you know what my what, one of my favourite things about Rasmus Hoyland is? It's his mentality and its attitude. You know, he's 20 years of age and he moves to United for nearly £70 million. And everyone's, I feel like, hating on him. I feel like everyone wanted Hoyland to fail when he moved to United. Everyone was saying, who is this guy Man United spent so much money on? But I loved the confidence in Hoyland himself. That's what I absolutely like, how Hoyland himself was so determined to come to United. No matter people saying he wasn't ready, a lot of the hate he was getting, he believed in himself. He believed he was good enough. And that's what I like. And there's a video here of Rasmus Hoyland when um, Denmark obviously qualified. And you can see his personality. Um, I'll play that two seconds. It's a long copy. Yeah, <laughs> But you can see he's got, at 20 years of age, he's got that mentality, got that self-belief. It's not just about having the athleticism. He ticks the boxes. He's powerful. The sheer power behind Rasmus Hoyland's shots are crazy. He's got that athleticism. Like, that's ticked. Power, pace, strength, height. Every kind of athleticism trait as a striker, that's ticked. Mentality, that's ticked. Intelligence, runs, movement off the ball, <clears throat> that is ticked. Work rate, that is ticked. You know, overall game, that is ticked. And that's what I've said with Hoyland. Obviously, early days, and I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but his general potential, you know, is, is insane. And, you know, like, he's so complete. And that's why I'm saying, you know, Rasmus Hoyland could generally be an in incredible player. Like, his potential is an absolute joke, which is the purpose of today's video, which is going to sum up the last thing 
that I said on Rasmus Hoyland. So I tweeted this earlier today. I said, another brilliant goal from Rasmus Hoyland today. At 20 years of age, he already looks so complete, showcasing his immense potential and the crazy impact he could have on Manchester United. He's been clinical despite being in a graveyard shift at United. His athleticism is elite, displaying both speed and strength, holding off defenders like Gabriel impressively. And the sheer power behind his shots is remarkable. When not scoring, he contributes by holding up the ball, making runs, creating space and drawing out defenders and laying off the ball to our attackers. He's a brilliant dribbler, notably carrying the ball forward frequently and demonstrated his fantastic goal. Demonstrated this with a fantastic goal against Galatasaray. He works tirelessly off the ball, constantly pressing, looks composed in possession. Big fan so far. And this is not just what we've seen at United. You know, we were aware of a lot of this stuff <clears throat> because of what he obviously did at... Um, Atalanta, I've got the name of it as well. We saw Atalanta when we did an analysis video on Hoyland, how he was really good in tight angles. If you saw the goal we scored with Denmark yesterday, tight angle, really good at getting the ball in tight angles, finishing it, power, boom, right in there. Like his, his ball striking is so clean. You know, we've seen that if you look at his highlights from Atalanta, you've seen that he's a good finisher. If you look at his highlights from Atalanta, you see that, you know, he can, he's got quite the technical ability for his size and he can get sheer power behind the ball because of his strength and size. You know, we've seen that he makes good movement. We saw Atalanta, he used to sometimes get the ball quite out wide and move the centre-backs out wide and create space for his players. We've seen that he's a great ball carrier. He can get the ball from the halfway line up the pitch, which is something that United desperately need because I think we're really lacking in build-up, especially in the second and third phase of the pitch. And Hoyland coming in helps with that and also allows us to get more control, which means we're less likely to give the ball away in stupid positions and get countered and hopefully concede less goals because <clears throat> we're conceding crazy amount of goals. But with Hoyland... Great finisher, electric, can carry the ball, is technically good, is intelligent, can press, is a poacher, and that is what you want in a striker. Please do hit that like button. Of course, subscribe down below if you're new. I will be back with a live video tonight. See you then. Bye.